Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sheng Wei Xu. I'm very glad to present our paper here. And uh, it's a joint work with Yi Chi Zhang, Paul Resnick, and Greg Schoenbeck. We are all from the University of Michigan. Okay. Let's start with some uh, interesting motivation, like, like in our very sleepy afternoon. And let's talk about something exciting about uh, like chat GPT and large language models. So like uh, the modern AI systems uh, heavily require high quality human label data. For example, like the state of art uh, large language models requires uh, uh, reinforcement learning from human feedback. And to test these large language models, uh, typically human references are applied. And in some other AI systems like uh, computer vision, there's also need for human label data. And in addition to AI, actually the like high quality information from human is also uh, widely applied in decision making or like peer review or and any other uh, some many other uh, like uh, field. Yeah. So however, like uh, high quality responses from human often requires human effort. Like for, for in the uh, above example, like uh, the agent need to exert effort to get that high quality information. And as you can imagine, that if we apply some flat payment, like the payment is the same for all the agents, the agents can be strategic in exerting efforts. It may be lazy. So how to incentivize high quality information is a very important question. So typically, there's a need for incentivized effort, which uh, sorry, in incentivize mechanisms, which uh, like uh, pay the agents according to their re report quality. So imagine that if you are a principal running some cross-sourcing system, like which mechanism should you use? A very straightforward idea is to use the spot checking mechanism. So like it check, it's randomly check a fraction of the tasks. And ideally, we can compare the agent's report with the ground truth and pick agents according to that comparison. And for the unchecked tasks, we just apply a constant payoff. So obviously, if we check, check more fraction of the tasks, we will get a more accurate score with the spot checking mechanism. And even if we check, check only a small fraction of the tasks, we can still penalize low quality agent's report by applying a potential threat, like uh, some so, but there's two constraints. So the first constraint is we need a trusted effort, uh, sorry, trusted expert for accessing the ground truth. So which, which could be very expensive in like cross-sourcing tasks. And additionally, uh, like the harsh penalty is not practical in cross-sourcing applications because we can't like uh, apply a negative payment to the cross-source workers. So we first talk about how to deal with the question, the, the problem need to accessing the ground truth. So Miller et al. proposed a mechanism called peer prediction. It scores the agent based on the correlation between his report and his peers. So there's no no need to uh, like uh, access the ground truth, and it, it can generally promote uh, effort. And there has been a, a a family of peer prediction mechanisms has been proposed after Miller et al. Okay, so given this uh, kind of all kinds of mechanisms, which kind of mechanisms should we use? So can we use peer prediction mechanisms to replace spot checking mechanisms while uh, save the uh, cost of uh, accessing the ground truth, but uh, still elicit enough amount of effort? So there has been some previous work that uh, like uh, show that peer prediction makes things worse, but uh, we will skip that and uh, we will discuss that in, in the poster session if you are interested. So here we want to propose uh, some uh, standard metric to compare this mechanism's performance. And uh, generally we want this standard metric to be interpretable, which means the score should uh, range from zero to one, like accuracy or like F1 score in supervised machine learning. And zero means bad, one means good. So here is a like, toy example to illustrate some intuition. Like, uh, in our paper, actually, we use a more complicated model, but uh, I will skip that. Uh, we can talk about that in the poster session. Yeah. Okay. Consider there's two agents, uh, and uh, the agents can choose from two effort levels. The high effort costs one, and the low effort is free. So consider the following mechanism: if both of the agents exert the same of e the same effort, so each agent will has a higher score with probability a half. 
So actually, they are the same. So the wins with probability are half. So if one agent choose a high score, a high effort, and the other agent choose a low effort, the high effort person wins with probability p. So, so after that, we use a tournament, pays zero for the losing people, and for the uh, pays b for the winning agent. Okay, know that this probability b will depends on how accurate the score is. Like if we get a, a more accurate score, we get a higher p. Okay, so here is uh, their utility. So if we want to make high effort and equilibrium, which is we want, yeah. So um, so the like we need to make the payment greater than some threshold. So here is the utility for the uh, agents when they are in this equilibrium, and deviating from high effort to low effort will get the uh, the following uh, utility one minus p uh, times b. So then we can compute that uh, the threshold. So similarly, we get a threshold for low effort is an equilibrium. So we can see that if we make b sufficiently high, we can make the high effort an unique equilibrium, which is we want in the cross-sourcing application. In addition, actually we want p, oh, sorry, we want the payment b to be small to save the budget to elicit the effort. So therefore, we need p to be high, and then that's, we can get a lower threshold. Okay, does that make sense? OK, so therefore, we propose this term called motivational proficiency. It's the ability to incentivize effort. It's like it's the expected total uh, payoff, uh, which is needed to, to elicit the desired effort level. So if the payment is less, that means the, the mechanism has more motivational proficiency. So if we want more motivational proficiency, we need a higher p in the previous example, and then we need higher accurate scores reflecting the effort for the mechanism. And uh, this, uh, this applies to both sport checking mechanism and peer prediction mechanisms. Okay, so now we talk about how the sport checking ratio uh, impacts the uh, motivation. So the sport checking ratio is a fraction of random check tasks. So it helps the uh, the score accuracy. So if we check more uh, tasks, we get a more accurate score. And if the score is more accurate, it leads to higher motivational proficiency. Therefore, we can use that equivalent sport checking ratio as some metric to measure the performance of a peer prediction mechanism. It's a, like a, it's a mapping from a peer prediction mechanism to some sport checking ratio. So if a peer prediction mechanism has sport checking equivalence zero, Sorry, for, for example, that means it's really bad because it's equivalent to check nothing. And uh, if a peer prediction mechanism has a sport checking ratio, oh, sorry, sport checking equivalence 100%, that means it's really good. So that means it's as good as some uh, mechanism that has full access to the ground truth. So this equivalent can not only based on motivational proficiency and also some other previous metrics including the measurement integrity and sensitivity. So in our paper, our main theoretical result is we show a linear bijection between measurement integrity and sensitivity. That's our main theorem. And we can use that as some proxy of the expected total payment, which is a motivation of proficiency. And there was a, sorry, so this gives us a chance to compute the uh, sport check equivalence with, some, with data. So as we as we can uh, as we want as we expect, like if the maximum has higher measurement integrity, it will has lower expected total payment. And similarly, if it has higher sensitivity, we will expect it has lower expected total payment. So we use some uh, empirical result to show that because our theoretical result works on some reasonable but like particular theoretical model under some assumptions. So we test with some empirical study that uh, like uh, relaxing that uh, assumptions. So we can see that the, on the left figures, the x-axis is a measurement integrity, and the y-axis is a total payment. Each dot represents a mechanism. And you can see there are uh, the measurement integrity and the total payment are strongly negatively correlated. And it happens similarly to sensitivity on the right figure. So let me, let me conclude our co contributions. 
So we introduced a new metric, the spot check equivalence. It used the equivalent spot checking ratio as an interpretable metric. And we unified two previous metrics as our main uh, theoretical contribution. And we proposed two methods to empirically compute the spot check equivalence based on the uh, previous uh, unification. So uh, finally, let me uh, introduce how to apply spot check equivalence. I was a metaphor of supervised learning. Like in supervised learning, if we get some algorithm, we test it on the validation set, and we compute the accuracy record or F1 score, and if it's good enough, we put that into application. And similarly, for peer prediction mechanisms, we can validate on some simulation data or real data and compute the spot check equivalence. And it's, if it's good enough, we put that into information elicitation applications. So there could be several future directions, and I, I will highlight two. So one is that in the crowdsourcing setting, we pay agents with money. So the but in some other settings, for example, peer grading, like the there is a non-monetary setting, the payment is bonded. So the students can only get A, B, C, D, E. So it's also very important to investigate the motivational proficiency here. So another future direction is that the current information elicitation mechanisms are mainly focusing on the uh, like multiple choice or numerical questions. So we like it's very important to explore how to elicit high quality textual information from human agents. So textual information is richer than like numerical or like multiple choice, but it's more complicated. So we may use the large language model's ability to analyze the structure of textual responses. So we had made some initial progress on this direction, so we can talk about that in later poster session. So that's all our uh, presentation, and uh, thanks for listening. Uh, our poster will at 4.30 at the Central Ballroom. I'll see you there. Thank you very much. <laughs>